hi there. Welcome to Creative Nature Adventures. My name's Danielle, and um, I'm hoping everybody's doing well. I just got my second COVID vaccine, so I'm hoping uh, to start doing face-to-face. -face. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing one this Sunday at Lake Morton in Lakeland. So if you're interested, go to my Facebook page at Creative Nature Adventures, and we're still going to be doing the social distancing. Um, and uh, it's summer in Florida anyway. You guys aren't going to want to be on top of each other anyway. Um, and we will talk about ducks and wading birds and we'll sketch some. And then, you know, before we leave, we'll, we'll talk about our techniques and show each other our pages if you want. If not, no, you know, no pressure. Um, but I'm hoping that you guys are as excited as I am for life to kind of start again. Um, as you guys know, if you've been watching any of my videos that I stink at this, I mean, <laughs> I'm not very good at the whole technical thing. And I pretty much pride myself in being a little bit of a techie, but, um, apparently I'm not, not so much. So, um, this is try number, I don't know, 500 and something. Um, I actually did this already once and somehow it didn't, didn't uh, record. So try number two. Today, we're going to look at a cypress tree, um, just the buttressed end, which is the bottom end. And buttress just means instead of it going down into the ground, because cypress trees um, grow where it's wet, they come down and then they kind of swell out to give themselves a little more stability in the wet soil. So someone sent this to me and they asked me about uh, how I would go about it. So that's what we're gonna do. If you're in the Southeast, you've seen plenty of cypress trees. If you're not, they're very interesting trees. We have two types down here, pond cypress and bald cypress. Bald is the one that you usually see the most of. And they're absolutely beautiful trees. I, I dare say that um, they're, they're one of the most fascinating trees that, uh, especially in the Southeast, just think they're, they're magnificent. So we'll go through and let me share my screen. Okay, so when the person sent this to me, let me try to move this a little bit, they sent it to me in color and they were actually trying to do it in um, black and white. They were doing it with graphite. So that's what we're gonna do today. So one of the first things, let me see if I can lighten this up just a little bit. There we go. So one of the first things that, that I did was downloaded it and then did it in black and white. And one of the reasons that you want to do that is if you're looking at value, not color, but value, doing it in black and white is gonna help you quite a bit. And I think this is a good um, technique, even if you are trying to do something in color, if you take that color photo, and actually can put it in black and white and you can kind of see where the brights are, where the darker darks are, um, and it helps you. It just overall helps you. So when I first took a look at this, it, it is beautiful, beautiful contrast. I, I really do think this is a great, Great picture. And this is pretty representative of what you're going to see on a cypress with that buttressed base, that that large flanged base. Can I notice on this side that it comes down? It comes down a little bit like that. And then on this side, it flanges out quite a bit more. Let me make sure it's more like. 
Check that. All right. And then we've got the water. We're just going to do general. It's coming around. So notice that I did the cylinders. I do have another video about cylinders and how that creates volume for your, especially if you're doing trees, for your trees. And, and we'll get rid of all that. As a matter of fact, I can just come in and get rid of that right now. So that way we're not, we're not all fascinated with it. If you're like me, sometimes I have the uh, attention span of a gnat. So I, what is that doing there? Why is that there? Why didn't I erase that? So the next thing I would do is figure out where my darkest darks and my lightest lights are. Okay, so, you know, here and here and here, these are my lights. This, this, and this are really dark. These are my darkest darks. Now, one of the things that I do want to take into account is the negative shape or the shape that these dark areas take. So see how it kind of tapers. That actually comes out a little bit more. Okay, but this dark area comes up. All right, so this would be your dark. And then this comes up, comes out. And then there's another dark area right in here. So this dark area is this, this dark area is this. So as I'm coming up, I can tell that my light area is right about here. And notice it's not, I'm not going in and that's my light area. Also notice that I'm doing really light sketches. Now, John Muir Laws, and, and if you guys have not heard of him, you need to go right after this video, go watch a lot of his videos. He will use a non-photo blue pencil. And I tried, I really did. Um, I kind of liked it, but I'm so used to drawing with um, just lead that I couldn't, couldn't quite get into using the non-photo blue. But whatever you use, just more than likely you're gonna wanna to sketch it out um, pretty lightly at first. Then this, there's another dark spot here. Then this comes out and then you've got all these um, little roots. I shouldn't say roots, but they're, they're kind of the buttressed edges. So keep in mind that I'm trying to show volume. So here's how this is gonna work. So this is the volume here, then it's dark area. So it's coming in, light, dark, light, dark, light, light. Okay, so if I were to do contour lines, so if we were thinking of Latin long lines, um, like a map, that's what we're doing. We're following, whoops, sorry. We're following these and trying to create, um, we're trying to create the depth and trying to create 3D from this particular picture. So then the next thing I would do is come in here and I would start to fill in my dark areas. Now, one of the things that I think everyone should do, and this is gonna be a quick tutorial 
on this. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And we're gonna do 11 because we can, this is zero, this is 10%, 20, 30, 40, this will be 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%. So whatever, this is, um, I believe this is to be led. So this is basically your um, standard, or I'm sorry, HB. So it's your standard number two pencil basically. So what I like to do is come in here and I'm gonna figure out what my darkest dark is gonna look like. Okay, that is my darkest dark. Then I'm gonna go over to 50% and I am gonna to try to figure out what my 50% would look like. So this is zero. Okay, there's my 10. 20, 30, 40. And I, as you go through, um, you know, you may end up moving some of the stuff around, you know, maybe this 50 is too dark. Um, but you can start figuring out what kind of range you can get, you know, from your pencils. See, so the difference between like say this and this isn't that much and these and these look pretty similar, but you kind of get the idea. I could go back and, and try to figure this out, but this is gonna give me a rough idea of what I'm working with and what I've got. So when you're working with graphite, you have the option of, you can do hatch marks or what I do, and this is what I do with colored pencil, is I do these little tiny circles. Now see right here, I'm starting to get a little overlap. You don't really want that, but since I know I'm gonna go over it a couple times and it's gonna be my dark, dark, I'm not too worried about it. Now, if it were my 10%, this, I do not want that. But with my dark, dark, I'm now gonna go over, kind of like hatch marks, I'm gonna go over diagonally. I wanna make it as dark as I possibly can. Okay, and if you notice, this comes up, but the really dark, part stops about there. Okay, and then we have a dark area here. Now, as the, the one of the reasons I wanted to show you this, as this comes in, normally, it depends on where your light source is coming from. So I actually think the light source is, is coming from maybe here. It's actually just coming from above. If it were coming from here, um, this would be in highlight. This would be probably more of a midtone. And then as you start to get back here and it starts to go in, it's going to get a little darker. As it comes out, you're going to have highlight, midtone, darker, just things to think about when you're drawing. Where's my light source coming from? Um, and this helps definitely with imagination drawings. So if you were to draw something on your own, that's one of the first things you should think about is where's my light source coming from. So on here, I'm going to really lightly, if you've no, you notice on this, you can actually see some of the texture. And I would say that this is probably in the 10% range. And you'll notice that in some areas, it's like 10%, then it's got some areas of darker, comes up, there's a little darker area. And then when it comes out of that, now we're starting to get into a little bit more darker area. Now here's the fun part. 
when we start to get, so right now I am doing this portion. Okay, so you notice this comes up, it's a little darker in here, it comes out. You can actually, you have this, this texture. So you can come in and put some darker parts in here to kind of, you know, mimic that texture. And if you notice that dark comes all the way up to this line, a lot of times, and I'm very guilty of this too, we want to blend everything, but really there are harsh lines like this in nature. Okay, this is in the dark, this is not. And as you come out, it starts to get darker. There's little jagged edges down here because some of it's in the water, some of it's not, some of it's been wet. Okay, we're starting to get into the darker area here. And again, I'm just following that negative space around. Okay, and I can just, for just sake of uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna darken this in, I'll come back to it. And same thing with here, as I'm shading it, I'm gonna go in the same direction as the tree bark. Then I'm gonna come back and put in my darker tones. Okay, so like here, there is um, a little spot where it's lighter, you know, so underneath, you notice it's a little bit of a shadow, so it kind of brings it out. Same thing with here. Um, and I'm just, I'm kind of showing generally that there's texture because if I went through and wanted to do all of that and I'm going through trying to make all of this texture um it would take forever and maybe that is not what I'm doing with this particular drawing I don't know maybe that's what you are doing maybe it's a you're, you're going to do this fantastic finished drawing with all of this texture and that's that's fine I mean that's great but you just have to decide if it's your sketch, what you want in your sketch and what you don't want, what you really don't want to spend time on, if, if that makes sense. All right, so now I'm getting into that dark, dark. And there's a little bit of gradation in that dark, you know, up. And this is why I think the light source is coming down because if you notice, we're coming across. There's just a little bit of fading here and here, and then really dark right down the middle. I don't think that portion. So the middle portion of that looks a little darker. So you have really light up here, not so much down here. It's darker in here. So I'm gonna darken this up just a little bit. So maybe this is like my 30%, this is my 20, this is my 10. You know, and you don't have to um, do this every time that you're drawing, you're making a graphite drawing, but it is nice, especially if you're using a new pencil to just figure out what your pencil can do. Okay, same thing here. So you can see that this part is really, really light. So I am, there's a fission right here. So I'm gonna kind of hint at that and then start drawing in my shading. And notice I have, um, I'm, I'm doing it with the side of my pencil, not the tip of my pencil. Now, when I, I want to do the darker, I'm going to do a little more of the tip of my pencil. But when I want to do large areas and I, I don't want to do real dark, I'm going to pull it on its side. You can do that with even smaller ones. So I have this 
what is this? 0.7 Pentel, the same thing. I can put it on its side. I'm not getting, you know, these big, huge swaths of graphite, but it is lighter versus if I start doing it like this. So get to know your materials. Um, that is one thing that I, I work a lot in graphite. I love colored pencil. I do use watercolor. I'm not as um, well versed or as good, I would say, in those. Um, I've started digital drawing. And that, <laughs> whew, when we talked about not being super techy, but all of them act differently. All of them are different tools. So in order for me to get good at these, I actually just have to spend time learning my tools. I have to spend time um, using my tools, finding out how they work, how is the best way to use them, what works for me. And that's the best way I think for everyone to learn. Just get a hold of the tools and realize that your um, journal and uh, it's not going to be your portfolio, right? So you are not going to, I'm sorry, my cat is, is doing something weird in the litter box. So I, I apologize. Um, this is not your portfolio. So you need to learn in your sketchbook, okay? And you're gonna have these awesome sketches in your sketchbook that you're gonna wanna spend tons of time on and that's fine. And then you're gonna have sketches in there that are gonna make you want to rip it out, don't. Because this is how you learn. And you are gonna go back at some point and go, oh my gosh, look at how much better I've gotten. Look at how I've learned to use my tools better. Man, look at me, I am awesome. Which you should be saying that to yourself every day because you are awesome. Um, and then this bottom part, it's kind of dark because, and that's this right here, here's the water and here is a water mark. Okay, so that's what I'm doing right here is the water mark. Let's move this over. Okay, so notice, this right here and this right here, there is a, a pretty well-defined line, but then there is little gradation. And that goes down to that, that wider area. I think my light is a, uh, Oh my gosh, that was no good. I'm trying to work on lighting and all this other good stuff. That might be better. Okay, and we'll do this section really quickly. So here's this dark spot. Here is this dark spot. Now, as I go over, Okay, in this area, this is where that dark spot is here. This comes out a little bit here. There's a darker area. Again, I'm, I'm kind of mapping out not only the shape okay, of this tree, but I'm mapping out the, the shapes of the values. Okay, and this comes up like this. This comes down. A darker area. Just fill that in. This is the darker area too. Notice that <clears throat> this comes down. This is in highlight. This is not. This is. Highlight, there's probably a, um, either it's the light part of the tree or there is light bouncing off of the water back onto this. 
Okay, so that's that right here. Probably gonna wanna keep that and highlight. And this comes up and it's a little, little darker. This comes up a little bit. Um, I also have a sharpener for this little pencil and sometimes we forget to resharpen our pencil and it does make a huge difference, especially when you're doing this, the small line work. So that's kind of how I would approach this Cypress. Um, if you're doing graphite and we'll we'll probably visit this again and we'll bring out the colored pencils and we'll look at it in color but working in graphite i don't know how many of you had to take or you did take i don't think anybody has to take art which is very sad to me but um, you would take a drawing class this especially in college the first drawing class you'd go to and you'd have to do a still life. And to me, it was the most boring thing. Why do I have to do a still life? I don't, I remember one, it was a teddy bear, a shoe and something else. And it was probably the most excruciating picture I've ever drawn. But I realize now that it was in graphite or charcoal and what the, teacher was actually trying to teach us was value. What are your values? So let's not even worry about color. Let's look at the lights and darks and how um, those play off of each other. Meaning if, um, if you have really light lights, really light darks, where are they? How are they playing off each other? Now, if I wanted to come back and um, I wish I had my kneadable eraser because you can make, but I can come in and actually create highlights with my, uh, my eraser here. We're just gonna create one there just, just to, to show you. You can come in and just create these highlights. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to try, especially with graphite. Grab yourself an eraser. If it doesn't work, erase it. If it doesn't work, try again. I have plenty of um, pictures or I should say pages like this where I'll just go in and I'll start another one because maybe I didn't like that one or I'll start a smaller thumbnail one. Um, Again, this is not to impress people. This is for you to learn. So take those opportunities. And then when you go home or you go in your, um, pardon me, you go in your studio and you want to make a uh, more finished drawing or finished picture, the more sketches you have, so this sketch, this uh, picture, any other sketches that I have are going to help you in the long run make better pictures or better art, but also it's going to make better natural history art, natural history drawing. Because I'm hoping while you were out there, you were taking your data, like it, what day it was, where you were, what the conditions were. Um, you know, this watermark, actually, if you look, now that I look at it, mm, this, was pro this is probably one of the higher watermarks, but to me, the water has got, gotten to at least up here at some point. That's the really cool thing about Cyprus is if you look at them, you can kind of tell when the high water events or how high the high water events are. So, all right, well, I hope 
that was helpful. And I hope that um, if you live in the Southeast, you're going to go out and find yourself a cypress tree and sketch. If you're in the Lakeland area, come out to Lake Morton this Sunday and uh, come sketch some ducks with us and some other waterfowl. And until then, happy sketching. <laughs>